in a rut. If you've read anything in the news this week, it seems Ottawa U has been going through a lot of issues involving sexual assault, rape culture, and the state of misogyny at the school. The importance of journalistic integrity is to look at a story from all sides, so including the perpetrators, the survivors, as well as the people affected by the story is the best way to convey what's going on. My name is Tina Wallace, I'm the art director of the Fulcrum, and recently we attended a press conference with Alan Rock and Michel Jean to talk about what was going on. Check it out here. Merci Patrick, uh, Madame la Chancelière, Mesdames et Messieurs, merci d'être venus aujourd'hui. L'Université d'Ottawa vit une période très difficile. Comme vous le savez, la présidente de la Fédération étudiante, Anne-Marie Roy, a fait l'objet d'une conversation sexuellement explicite sur Facebook entre cinq membres masculins de l'Association étudiante du campus. Et lundi, l'Université a suspendu son programme de hockey masculin en raison d'allégations des conduites graves de la part de certains membres de l'équipe. I'd like to quickly review the chronology of events because I believe it demonstrates how rapidly and how seriously we dealt with this matter. Senior management at the university learned of the allegations involving the men's hockey team from a third party on February 24th. We reported the incident to the police the next day, February 25th. And then on the 25th and 26th, we examined our response. We came to the conclusion that suspending the hockey program was appropriate. We went through all of the internal mechanisms associated with getting approval for that step. We also decided on an internal review. And we recognized that it would be necessary to brief our board. We convened a meeting for the board on Friday by conference telephone call. And we decided to make the announcement on Friday of the suspension of the team and the appointment of the internal review. On Thursday evening, we were asked by the Thunder Bay Police to put off the announcement because they were at a delicate point in their efforts to advance the investigation. And so we postponed until Monday the publication of the communique. And as you know, it was made at that time. And uh, since that time, uh, we have busied ourselves with the question of what are the next steps it's those next steps that we're announcing this morning. Let me first of all stress that when we speak of the hockey team and Thunder Bay, those are simply allegations. We are cooperating with the police. We've launched an internal review. But it's important for all of us to respect the fact that we're dealing with just allegations at this stage and that the police inquiry is continuing. But the fact that those allegations were made, taken together with a very disturbing online conversation about Madame Roy, point in our minds to the need for a broader conversation, a broader response. Both incidents raise troubling questions about attitude, and about behavior. Both call out for a response from a university community that aspires to be a place of respectful behavior and reasoned dialogue. Working towards a meaningful response in these troubling circumstances will require at least three things. First of all, an honest assessment of the environment on campus. Second, a sincere resolve to face up to what we may discover and to make changes where they're needed. And third, a wholehearted renewal of our shared commitment to bring, to bring respect and consideration into all of our dealings with other people. Let me say a few words about each of those three elements. I begin by observing that our campus is indeed 
a safe place for students, for, for faculty, for staff. We have policies, we have practices in place to protect members of the university community, and that includes, for example, our, our mechanisms to deal with allegations of harassment. The questions we now must ask involve how those policies, how those practices can be improved, can be strengthened. In evaluating our campus environment, we have to ask how well we send the message that all forms of sexualized violence are unacceptable and profoundly repugnant to our core values and beliefs as a university community. I know something about its culture. I know something about its values. And I can tell you those values include a commitment to prevent violence against women, a commitment to create a culture of respect and civility, to maintain our campus as a safe place for students and faculty and staff. That's bred into the DNA of this place. And one of the things that's so appalling about the events and allegations of the last couple of weeks is they stand in such shocking contrast to the values that I've known and internalized for over 50 years. That's why today we're announcing the creation of a task force on respect and equality composed of faculty, staff, and students. Their mandate will be to provide recommendations on how to reaffirm that culture of respectful behavior on campus so that everyone here, women in particular, can learn and work in an environment where they feel they're protected from harassment and sexualized violence.